Lincoln and the 84 Hun Red Rocket CR250. With a full DG pipe and silencer. It's got new tires, chain sprockets. And it's been Kaplan America out. And she's ready to race. It's Christmas time in New England, and that means we're riding indoors because there's 18 inches of snow outdoors, and it's about 20 degrees out. But it's warm inside, and this is one hot Honda CR250. This was a great time to be a motocross rider. This is 1984, I was a senior in high school, and this was the bike to have. It's the most beautiful bike from that era. It was competing against the Suzuki RM250, the Yamaha YZ, and the Kawasaki KX, and the Honda always had me at hello. Just something about the bright red frame and graphics and the red, white, and blue on the shroud that stuck with me. But this was a great time to ride any bike. There was so much evolution going on in the motocross world. In, in a six year period, more advancements were made than in the last 20 years in the motocross industry. They went from twin rear shocks standing straight up to laid down shocks to a single ProLink rear suspension with 12 inches of travel, almost double the wheel travel in a six year period. The forks went to forward axle, long travel, foot long of, of uh, suspension. The frames were revised and also they went to a disc front brake. So the suspension and braking was light years better. Now, they also did quite a bit with the motor, but if you are gonna race this bike in vintage motocross, the pre-1985 class, this is the bike to have. This will dominate, this will win at the Unadilla MX Rewind with Junior on it, or the right rider, this bike could definitely win at uh, uh, MX Rewind or any of the vintage events at the Southwick National Track. This is the bike to have. Now, this is also gonna be very competitive in the pre-1990 class because there were a lot more, this, this, was a, this was a cutting edge bike. It had the first version of the Honda ATAC valve, which is a power valve. The engines before 84 were piston port induction. These had power valves and reed valves and they were also liquid cooled. So um, this is, as far as advancements that came after this, there are more or less improvements over what they already had here. So this is a fantastic bike. It's fast, it barks, it's competitive with even modern two strokes. Um, there's a couple things you can do to make it even faster. You can put a bigger carburetor on it. This motor is stock. When this bike came to us, the previous owner had already rebuilt the motor. We did a compression test, 195 PSI, which is rock solid. Everything is tight in the motor, the clutch, the transmission. Um, and we took it to the next level. It's, it's got a new set of Dunlop GMX tires, front and rear with tubes. The chain and sprockets are brand new. Gold chain with the uh, uh, aluminum rear sprocket and front sprocket. This one's drilled up for lightness. It's got a new shifter on it. The original pegs are in mid shape. That's a clear sign this thing was not hammered by a pro. Usually they're all sagged out and hanging off the, the edge. This is uh, this, These pegs look brand new on both sides. The shifter's a new shifter, but the pegs are original. The kicker is in beautiful condition. In fact, Eric took it off and polished it on the buffing wheel. Spent about an hour polishing it. It's beautiful. The original brake lever's in mint shape. The engine cases are in great shape. And the frame rails are in excellent shape, too. They're nice and straight. So that's another hallmark of a bike that's been cared for. Uh, the, but this, this gas tank and the radiator shrouds, these are original. These are the original factory items, as are the engine cases, frame pegs and uh, quite a lot of the other items on here but all the wear items have been replaced the original frame paint is intact it's been touched up the guys um spray painted the frame rails here in in the bottom frame rail it's not a professional um power coating or a professional paint job but in order to keep the cost down on the bike because we put close to three thousand dollars into the bike we didn't want to go much farther there's over 20 hours of labor put into it and um over a thousand dollars of parts the, uh, the um, exhaust system is a brand new DG pipe that dock polished so it has a nice shine on it. The ATAC valve and the whole exhaust uh, power valve system was taken apart, cleaned and resealed. Uh, again, the, um, the uh, Kickstarter is in mint shape. The carburetor was taken apart, cleaned, has a brand new air filter in the air box. The air box was cleaned out also, the tank was flushed out. It's got a new fuel line on it and it also has new drain lines. New chains and sprockets. Uh, the 
rear fender was replaced with a brand new fender. The side panels were replaced. The radiator shrouds have new graphics, but they're the original shrouds. The tank was cleaned up. The uh, front number plate is brand new, as is the front fender. It also has a brand new set of top of the line Renthal bars. These are beautiful. And uh, a brand new perch and lever. You can see it's nice and fresh with a nice set of period correct Ori grips. This bike's ready to go to Unadilla and Huck Gravity Cavity. It's ready to send it. Um, brand new brake lever, uh, Ori grip on this side, throttle tube, and a brand new Renthal crossbar pad. So everything up top here is brand new and refreshed and she's ready to rumble. If you come around this side here, you'll also see it has a brand new um, uh, uh, chain guide and roller. And also up here, look, all the hardware is new. All, all the bolts and nuts are new on here and it has a brand new chain slider. That's a, a wear item, so that's been replaced. The um, hardware on the subframe is new. The hardware on the, the seat and the fenders is brand new, as is the hardware on the shrouds. This is brand new OEM Honda. Um, componentry. The hardware to hold the radiator on is new. If you come around the front of the bike, you'll see it's also got two brand new um, springs holding it on and everything's been resealed so there's no oil leaking out the front, no blow-by. Usually bikes from this area will get smoke coming, as much smoke coming out the front as you do the back, but the power valve was cleaned by the, the dirt bike wizard did the work on all this and he's been working on these bikes for, since, well, since before Shane was bored over, over 30 years, so it was done right. The air box is, is drilled for a little bit of air intake right here. Um, the Dirt Bike Wizard drilled that out so it would flow a little bit better. It's got a new filter. He also jetted the carburetor to work with this pipe. So this thing's on point. It hauls the mail and it's, it's fresh. It's a beautiful bike. Um, it's not done up so much that you wouldn't want to take it. Like if you powder coat the frame and take it to the next level, you may not want to ride it. This one's set up to take to Unadilla. If you want to put it on display in the museum here, it's going up on the third floor with the other dirt bikes, uh, with, the, with the Jeremy McGrath replica, the Ricky Carmichael replica, and Doug Henry's bike. Uh, take a look at that picture right there, Kenny. That, that, uh, that's Jojo Keller from the same era, uh, pre-1989 on a Honda CR125R. He was just inducted into the New England Hall of Fame about a month ago, right here in this very room. Actually, he was sitting at that table right there. So he's a legend and a hero from our motocross heritage here in New England. So this is absolutely a bike that looks great sitting in front of our tree next to the Christmas special Honda Z50. Um, we put the number ones on there, the American flag, the HRC logos, just to spruce it up a little bit. And uh, she is beautiful. Um, Kenny, is there anything you'd like to add about this bike? Hmm. As far as um, early liquid cooled CR250s with the power valve, um, these are few and far between. I feel like we've brought through more 78 to, to, to 81 red rockets, the air cooled ones, than we have uh, stuff like this uh, that's in the era with the disc brake and all the. Uh, well, well, you're right, we have. Closer to the pinnacle of uh, development for, for the two strokes. So. Um, definitely a sweet bike. I rode this when we brought it off the trailer uh, from Rick Smith's collection. When we first got it in, that was in early September, and the bike rips. So no excuses with it. Um, I, I was actually I, I was I was uh, making some jokes because Ken spent so long with the with, with the team getting this one ready that oh I, I felt like he was making a career out it's of it. It's kind of ridiculous. Um, it's, but, ridi it's ridiculous. But, uh, it, it becomes an, an obsession. I mean, you're, you're a motocross guy. We, we, we've raced motocross forever. So when we bring stuff in like, like this, we take our time with it to make it look pretty. And, and I mean, we special ordered the DG pipe, waited three weeks for that. And, and the dirt bike wizard went right through it and pretty, he race prepped it. You know, so it's it, it. This is more of a labor of love than something to make money. We're going to be upside down on the bike, whichever way you you, you look at it. Yeah, there's no but, doubt about it. It's a labor of love. We'd never make any money on these bikes, but um, if you want to walk around it, I'll go over. I'll read the work order one more time. So the compression test again: 195 psi, perfect spark. Clean out the air box, put a new air filter in it, uh, install the brand new chain on the new sprockets, and clean the carb and jetted it for the DG pipe. Uh, change the gear lube, put a new shifter on it. Replace the front brake cable, I forgot to mention that. Um, flush and bled the front brake so it's got new fluid in it. Install the upper chain roller and a brand new clutch cable. So I forgot that too, it has new cables, uh, clutch and brake. Um, new clutch perch and lever. New bars, new bar pad, and a new front brake lever. So um, then he also removed the entire exhaust system, replaced it with the DG, put the put uh, 
um, new uh, power valve covers and manifold that was all taken apart, cleaned and receipt and reseal. Uh, new chain slider. Um, also put new rear wheel bearings in it. I forgot about that too. So a total, he did a total of 12 hours and it went into the detail shop where they polished the aluminum, polished the pipe, painted the engine, painted the frame, put the new graphics on it. It's got new graphics on the number plates. Uh, put the new fenders on it. They do all the cosmetic stuff. Put the grips on it. So they spent a full day on it there. So a total of 20 hours labor plus about $1,000 in parts. Uh, and you've got a three thousand, close to three thousand dollar work order, uh, eighteen hundred dollars in, in labor, and about a grand in parts plus tax, close to three thousand dollars. So that's why we don't make any money on these because if we sold it the way it was, right when it rolled in here, it probably would have bought. I don't know. We're perfectionists. We love these bikes. You know. You know what we do when we work on them? We do them the exact same way we back we were when we were racing them. We go through everything: chains and sprockets, tires, brakes, cables engine exhaust it, the graphics you make it beautiful so that i'd be proud to roll up to the line i'd be i'd be brimming with pride rolling up to unadilla line through the vintage class pre pre-85 on this and no in my heart i've got a bike that can pull the whole shot and can win as long as i've got the balls to do it and hold it wfo uh, this bike can absolutely do it beyond the shot of a doubt i want to go to the line with confidence if i, if I put my son on the, on a bike i want to know he looks good it's fast, it's safe, and it's a Honda, and he can win on it. So it's a hell of a lot of fun. I just, I get a lot of gratitude, and that's why I call it a labor of love. And you look at heroes like Joe Joe Keller and Joe Waddington and Doug Henry, the guys from New England that, that won national races on bikes like these. It's, it's an, there's a lot of heritage to it. Uh, this is an investment quality bike, absolutely. Uh, it's 35 years old and it's in beautiful shape, so it's only going up in value. So it was done right by us here at the museum, Dirt Bike Wizard. Shane, myself, Eric, and Doc, everybody had their hand on this one, so who knows how much time we really have into it, but um, we kind of guesstimate, round down. Seat cover's in beautiful condition, as is a gas cap, and just an awesome bike, so hope you put this under your tree. It's not too late. It's only December 9th. Plenty of time to ship it anywhere in the country for $5.50 or less. Get it to the UK for about $7.50, so good luck bidding on it. Merry Christmas, happy holidays. Thanks for watching. If you have the subscribe button, please do subscribe and click the uh, notification button and you'll get all our new videos. Thanks for watching and God bless America.